Okay, so we're uh, we're gonna get started today, and I know that a lot of you haven't finished all of your elevations just yet. That's okay. You'll have uh, a good chunk of time today to keep working on your elevations. The part that I'm gonna talk about actually doesn't take that much time, uh, but I also think it's one of the more important things that we can talk about. So today we're gonna talk about the difference between model space and paper space in AutoCAD, which unfortunately seems to be the thing that generally AutoCAD classes leave out. They don't really talk about it. And if you're gonna be working long-term in a firm, doing architectural style drawings, you need to have some concept about what paper space is and how to use viewports and how to scale drawings properly, et cetera. Um, and so we're gonna spend some time today talking about that and the differences and setting up layouts and, and that sort of thing. So as we get started, everything that I've drawn so far is in model space. We can tell that it's model space because of that black background with the white lines. When we switch over to paper space, AutoCAD's really good at differentiating. It's gonna be white background with black lines. So as soon as you flip over, you think piece of paper. Uh, and essentially the reason that it's called paper space is it has to do with a piece of paper rather than um, the full size drawing that we've been used to. So I have my drawing set up here. Uh, this is uh, the finished version of what I was working on uh, last class. Um, and I will, by the way, go back after we go through the, the, um, the demo today, I'll go back and talk to you about how to create the topo lines um, and the slope across your building. And I'll do some of the more complicated engine, um, elevation work so that you guys can see that. But we're, we're gonna start first with um, the difference between model space and paper space and kind of setting up a layout. So I already have one layout that's, uh, that's set up for us, I think. Yep, there it is. And essentially, this is what we're ultimately going to be creating today. So I start with my model space, which is over here in the model tab, where everything's laid out. We've, we've worked, we've rotated our view around, we've drawn all four of the elevations, we've folded them out in space. Now it's time to think about, well, how do they belong on a sheet of paper? If I was gonna go print this, which by the way is part of your assignment um, 105 requirements, so you're gonna end up printing it. So given that, that information, how do I get this, instead of looking like this where it's folded out in all directions and one elevation is upside down, how do I get it so that it fits on a piece of paper, is a specific scale, and, and can ultimately be printed? Uh, and that's where this whole idea of paper space comes in to effect. So for you guys, you probably have a tab for model and you probably have a tab for layout one and maybe a tab for layout two uh, at the bottom. Your tabs in all likelihood look something like this rather than the one that's already laid out like this. I just kept this one so you can see it as an example of what we're going to do. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and click on the layout one tab or in my case, it's gonna be the layout two tab so we're seeing uh, a white sheet of paper here. You can create lots of layout tabs. So we could click another plus sign and create another tab, uh, et cetera. So there's lots of opportunity here for different layouts. So what I'm looking at when I switch over into this paper space is a sheet of paper. So rather than having a full size drawing where I'm in feet and inches, I'm now looking at a drawing as if it's a sheet of paper. Before I can actually start placing my objects and understanding scale, I need to specify some of the settings for this piece of paper. So I'm gonna right click on the tab down here. In my case, it's layout two. For you guys, it might be layout one. And when I right click on it, I can choose the page setup manager. And so this page setup manager right here allows me to access things about the piece of paper that I'm working on. So this has nothing to do with the model. This is the page itself, the piece of paper. And I can see right now that under plot size is eight and a half by 11 inches in landscape format. Well, I don't want an eight and a half by 11. I want something bigger than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the modify tab right here. And that brings up the page set out, page setup for layout two. Uh, this dialog box look an awful lot like the printer dialog box. In fact, it's identical to the printer dialog box. The key here is that we're setting things up ahead of time. We're not actually printing, we're setting it up to print down the road. So let's go through our options. Uh, the first thing under printer and plotter name, we have in this class so far always been choosing the publish to web JPEG. We're not gonna do that here. We're gonna write to a PDF. Uh, and so there are, these always change. There are several different options. We have these AutoCAD PDF, high quality print, smallest file size, web, mobile, etc. We can use the AutoCAD PDF, high quality print, that's fine. The other one that I've had lots of success with and I've done forever is the DWG to PDF. 
Either one should turn out just fine. I'm going to stick with the DWG to PDF because I have a lot of practice with that one and I know it works, so we'll use that one. And once I have the plotter set to DWG to PDF, it's now time to look at the next option here, which is paper size. So if I click on paper size, you'll see that I have a bunch of sizes available to me that are preloaded. We're looking for an ARC D, which is a 24 by 36 sheet. There are two of them listed. There's an ARC D 36 by 24, and there's an ARC D 24 by 36. I think it's the 24 by 36. Nope, it's the 36 by 24 that we want. And that specifies which one is the, uh, you know, basically, landscape format. Okay, so I've cho chosen ARC D 36 by 24. Next option down here is under what to plot, we want to plot the layout. We're not going to do any plot offset. And now the next thing here might be a little counterintuitive. The plot scale is actually going to be set at one to one because we're going to set up our viewports to scale and what we're printing is exactly what comes out. We specified our paper size. I want it to come out at exactly 24 by 36. So I'm going to choose a scale of one to one, which is there by default as it should be. Now on this right column, these are also important. So the first thing we need is under the plot uh, style table or pen assignments. This is a really antiquated thing that's built into AutoCAD. And I'll give you a little bit of background so you can understand why it says pen assignments there. So you guys have seen plotters before. They look like big printers, right? And they have you put your ink cartridges in, they just print bigger. Well, in the old days, we'll say in the 80s and 90s, you didn't have a plotter that was like a giant printer. You had a plotter that had individual little pens in it. That sounds so bizarre, right? They even had one that had pencils in it, so you could do a pencil drawing. And essentially what the plotter did is it said, oh, you've assigned a specific pen to this color. Let me go and get that pen out of my tray, and I'll come out and I'll draw your drawing for you. That's what an old school plotter did. So this, this holdover for plot style table or pen assignments is still there. And it would allow you to set it up so that, and a lot of firms still do this because they have principals who were like AutoCAD people back in the day and used to do it this way. They still kind of do it this way. Um, this allows you to set up colors for certain line weights. And you can load a custom table in here. If you work for a firm, they'll give you a table and they'll say, this is the, the table that we're going to use and you need to learn it. For our purposes, we're going to use the most generic one possible. It's the one that's the first drop down here. It's the ACAD.CTB. It's basically what you see is what you get. But we do have to actually load it. OK, so that's loaded. Next thing, we'll come down to quality, and we'll go ahead and say maximum. Then we have plot options. We do want to plot line weights. That's important. If we had transparency in the drawing, we could choose to plot transparency. I don't have any transparency in the drawing, so I'm not going to choose to plot it. We do want to plot with our plot styles. We do also want to plot paper space last. That means that anything that is on the paper, not on our drawing, but like if we put text on the paper, that will be on top of everything else. So we leave that checked by default. Uh, and we don't want to hide the paper space objects. We want those to show up. All right, it's already in landscape mode, so we're good. I'll go ahead and click on OK at this point. When I click on OK, the page size is going to change. We see a little bit of a dotted line for where the margins are for what the printer can print. It's giving us a general guide. I don't know that the, they are the most accurate, but it's certainly something to be aware of. Uh, I've certainly printed things where I have objects that are past where that dotted line is, and they still print. So it is what it is. It's kind of like a safety zone. So now that I'm done, I'll go ahead and click on Close. There we go. And now the piece of paper that I see here is 36 inches by 24 inches. So this is exactly what's going to come out of the plotter. This window right here is called a viewport. I'm going to go ahead and move it up so that it's right there. And this viewport controls what I can see of my drawing. So if I double click inside the viewport, I could actually zoom in on my floor plan. So there's my floor plan. And so this looks right now an awful lot like this one. The problem is I haven't actually specified what the scale of this drawing is just yet. So this is where we need to actually start to set up these viewports. And we'll create multiple viewports. You can make them larger, just like you would. But we need to specify that scale. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Properties window 
I'll do that by typing properties. And that brings up this properties window. Typically, I let the properties window float. But in this case, when we're dealing with layouts, we're going to use it over and over again. So I'm actually going to dock it over here on the right side so that it's permanently kind of stuck there. And it'll stay open and let me work with it. So if I have my viewport selected, and I come over here and I look at the properties, under miscellaneous, as we come down here, I have something called standard scale, and it's currently set for custom. If I click on where it says custom, you'll see that I have a variety of scales that are available to me. All the way from 1 64th of an inch equals one foot, uh, and we can keep scrolling down, and there is one foot equals one foot. Obviously, I can't plot at that scale. My guess is something like a quarter inch equals a foot is probably going to work for you for your drawing. If you need to jump down and do 3 16 that's fine with me as well. I'm going to stick with a quarter inch equals a foot. And when I specify that scale, you see that my floor plan has actually changed. It's not completely showing inside of my viewport. I might need to make my viewport a little bit bigger here. I need to move this viewport around. Now, the, the thing that people get stuck with is they double click to get inside the viewport. And then they say, oh, well, let me just zoom out and zoom in. OK, I'm good again. Well, you just change the scale. So you have to be careful not to do that. So if I select it. I'm going to go back and make sure that my scale is set at a quarter inch equals a foot. There it is. And if I want to move this inside the viewport, if I double click, I'm going to actually type pan so that I can pan without zooming in or zooming out. And I'll set up my drawing like that. Uh, when I'm done, I'll go ahead and hit escape, and then I'll double click outside of my viewport. And now I have this drawing at a quarter of an inch equals a foot. It's kind of like a clipping mask in, uh, in Illustrator where I can choose, or uh, in InDesign when you change the frame, I can change the viewport to make it smaller to show less line or uh, show, end up showing more line depending on how large I make it. So the other thing that can happen in paper space is that you can zoom in and you can say, oh, you know what, I really, I meant for this line to be thinner. So I'm zoomed in. Let me double click. Oh, OK, I'm inside the viewport, and then I can change this line. That's fine. But when you go to zoom out, wait a second. I can't see my paper anymore. I'm stuck. It has a tendency to, to do that. So you either have to be really careful. I'm going to hit Escape and then Control-Z twice to get myself back out. Nope, not quite. A couple more times. There we go. Now I'm back out. So what I'm going to do is after I set my scale, I wanted to illustrate that so you can see what can happen to you. But once I have the scale set, set a quarter inch equals a foot, right above that is something called display locked yes or no. I'm going to choose display locked as yes. And as soon as that happens, even if I zoom in and I double click and I want to change these lines, say, to be thinner, when I'm done and I zoom out, it's still going to maintain. It's not going to change the scale of the viewport. So set the scale of the viewport and then lock it. That's a really important thing to get used to. OK, so I have my viewport set. You'll see that in the viewport now, uh, assuming that I have it turned on, I'm going to see my line weights starting to show up. And I'm also going to see my line types starting to show up. So I have some phantom lines showing here. Uh, I probably have some hidden lines. Those are showing. Uh, and I have some line weights for what the doors look like, uh, or excuse me, what the walls are, et cetera. Um, if you are not seeing it, it's possible that your line weights are turned off. If you come to the bottom right corner, click on those three lines, you can choose the, to show the button for line weight. And then you can choose to toggle them on and toggle them off. So here it is toggled off. There it is toggled on. So you want to make sure that they're toggled on so that you can see them. So the next piece would be to bring in some more viewports. So we can see some more of the viewports. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Layout tab over here on the right. And I'm going to click on the new rectangular viewport. It's right here. It's under the Layout Viewport sections. Be careful you don't pick New under Layout, because that creates a brand new layout. We just want a new viewport. So I'm going to choose Rectangular Viewport. And I will draw another viewport. So this viewport and that viewport are unrelated now. I have two 
views. But in this viewport, I'm going to zoom in on that elevation right there. Same rules apply, or I'll double click to get outside of it, I'll click on it, and then I'll set my scale. So I'll come over here under standard scale and choose a quarter inch equals a foot. There it is at the correct scale. I may need to adjust the viewport so that I can see the ground a little bit. There we go. Let me go ahead and move it, and I'll move it up like that. So now I have that elevation. There are three more elevations, so I'm going to repeat this process. I'll come up to rectangular. I'll draw a new rectangular viewport there. I'll double click to get inside. Now, I double click and zoom in on the viewport that I, or on the, the part of the building that I want first. Uh, because if you jump to change the scale, it's not always, you can't always find your drawing. It might zoom in off, off center. So I zoom in on my drawing itself, double click outside, then click on the viewport, come over to my uh, standard scale, set that at a quarter inch equals a foot, and there it is. Now in this example, my building, or my elevation, is still on its side. So once I have it so that I can see it at its correct scale, I can go ahead and I can rotate that, and I'm going counterclockwise, so it's actually negative 90, so I can type in negative 90, or I could just come here till I snap, and there it is. So I rotate my viewport, and now that drawing is standing upright. So I'll do the same thing again with the, with the next drawing. So we'll come up here to rectangular viewport. I'll draw it. I'll double click to get inside the viewport. I'll zoom in on this elevation now. Perfect. Double click to get outside. Select my viewport. Come over to my standard scale. Choose a quarter inch equals a foot. There it is. And now in this one, I might need to uh, shrink this down just a little bit. I don't need as much space around it. There we go. Then I'll go ahead and rotate this view. So type rotate. I'm going all the way over at 180. And then I can go ahead and move this one to right there. So I have almost all my drawings now. One more time, we'll come up to a rectangular viewport. We'll double click. I'll zoom in on that drawing right there. Once I'm close, I'll come over. Let me double click to get out. Select just the viewport. Standard scale is now going to be a quarter inch equals a foot. This one also needs to rotate. And then we can move this one up there. And I need a little bit more of that. There we go. So I'm seeing that viewport as well. So I set up the viewports. I get them all at scale. Uh, these last elevations, I didn't end up locking the viewport, so I'll select them, and then I'll come over to Display Locked and choose Yes. Okay, so those are all locked now. Now it's a matter of kind of orienting these on the page, figuring out where they belong on the page. So I'm going to move this floor plan up a little bit toward the corner. Move it maybe like that. Now, it's always good practice to, if you have an elevation that's below a floor plan like this, to make sure that they line up. So this might be an opportunity for a ray. It's just temporary. That goes straight down. And I'll make sure that this edge lines up. Oops. Try that again. I clearly need my perpendicular snap turned on. There we go. There we go. So I just make sure that those two edges line up. It's good practice to make sure that they line up uh, because it helps relate the two together. This may need to move up just a little bit, so we can type move and I'll move it up, etc. Now for these buildings, they don't really line up to anything, but it's nice to have them placed uh, reasonably well. So let me go ahead and type move. We'll move this one over a little bit. We might move it up just a little bit. Let me move this one over. Let me move this one over a little bit. Yeah, something like that. You may find that you need to adjust 
how much space you have in each viewport. So I might need to shrink these down a little bit, etc. So it's a little hard to see it with the boxes around each of the viewports, but this is essentially uh, we're we're getting the layout to the point where okay, this looks this looks reasonably well. It may help if this. is kind of on a similar line with this, or maybe uh, I'll do another ray and make sure that the tops of these two line up. There we go. And at least those line up. That, so the little things like that can help line things up. Yeah? So what about the, like, the topography line? Does it stay there? Or can we... We're going to get to that in just a second. Good, great question. So at this point, I could go ahead and print my drawing and we get a PDF. I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and start fixing things that are wrong. So we'll go ahead and I'll click on the print icon and when I click on the plotter all of these settings we set up ahead of time. So all I really have to do is just say OK because everything's preset for me. So we'll say OK, it'll ask me where to save it. I'm going to go on the desktop and we'll save it right there and it will print and maybe I can find it. There it is. And so if I open it up and I look at the page, I can say, OK, well, I can certainly, I can see some of the line weights are working, sort of. Uh, but I'm getting these boxes around each of my viewports, and they're not the most attractive. I've got the topo lines running through here. So there's some corrections that need to happen. So I'll close that. We'll go back to AutoCAD, and we'll start making those corrections. So the first thing is these topo lines, like you said. Uh, we need to get rid of those. So what I'll do is I'll double click to get inside the viewport. There we go. And then I'm going to go to the Home tab. Oh, I'm still in the 3D view. Let me switch over into the Drafting and Annotation. Let me open up Workspace, and we'll switch to Drafting and Annotation, which should be the default, but it's of course not. Uh, and then I will go ahead and I'll open up the little drop down here for my viewports. So thus far, We've worked on freezing and thawing, and we've locked, and we have the viewport. There's another little icon here, and this is called freeze or thaw in current viewport. So this is really handy. So in this viewport, I want to freeze my topography. So we'll essentially turn off the topography in this viewport. It didn't turn off the topography as a whole. It didn't turn it off over here, just in this one viewport. So I can do the same thing. I can move down into this viewport go to my layers and turn off the topography there again. Come down into this view, turn off the topography there. Move over into this view, one more time, turn off the topography right there. Oops. And now that's off. So now, in all of these viewports, the topography is gone, except for the, the main plan. Uh, I should point out, by the way, that over here in model space, I added some extra topo lines just so that there were more of them. There's nothing fancy about them. I just interpreted and added a few more lines in there. Um, it just made the plan look a little bit better. So let me go back to my layout view here. I've turned off the topography lines in these viewports. But the next thing is, I really don't want to see the borders around these viewports. So in order to do that, I need to create a layer that is a non-printing layer. Um, I, you guys, I, I had you make a no-print layer. Um, in this example, uh, the layer, the non-printing layer that I used was just called Guides. Um, you can use the layer called No-Print. I have to create it again. And like I said, it's a personal preference to uh, on that No-Print. that it is a non-printing layer, so I have that turned on, so it's not printing, and then I turn that to be green. Uh, that's just a personal preference. Okay, so I have that set up. I'm going to move the viewports all onto that no print layer. So I'll come up here under my layers, and I'll switch to no print. And so the borders turn to no print. The layers themselves, or the content of the viewport, will still print. It's just the borders that don't. So now let's go ahead and do another test print. I'll click on the plot icon, 
We'll go ahead and say OK. I'm just going to overwrite this file. And there it is. And so now we don't have the borders. We don't have the topo lines running through our drawings. We should still have line weights. If I were to zoom in, yep, we're seeing the line weights. Now there's some mistakes in the line weights. Looks like I'm having a few issues with consistency of line weights. This is too dark. Furthermore, my doors somehow have the wrong line type assigned to, to them. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust those as well. So I'll jump back. Let's close this. I'll jump back here. I can go all the way back to model space. And I can work on the drawing here. So this block looked like it had too thick of uh, lines. I think I might have exploded these blocks, so they might not be blocks anymore. But I can change the, the layer of that to be on my furniture layer. I can make sure that this is on the furniture layer. Oh, it looks like I have two furniture layers. There's some issues. Let's get to... Why is it not listed? Oh, maybe that one's in block. Anyway, I'll leave it like that. Um, I'll go into my layer properties here, and I want to make sure that my furniture is set to 0, 0. That's good. Um, my doors, if I look at the line type, that one's wrong. So I'll change my line type into continuous. Now the doors will have a continuous line type. Uh, the other line types were showing up OK. My line weights seem OK. I can go back to my layout tab here. And I can go ahead and print this one again. And this time, let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Looks like my doors were fixed. Oops. like that. So there's probably some more line weights that I could spend a little bit of time. These, these are, uh, the windows are too thick, so I probably need to adjust those window layers a little bit. So there's, there's some issues still to resolve, but it's looking pretty reasonable. Also looks like this particular line right here, that piece of topo doesn't have the correct line type on it. So you always want to spend a little bit of time and look at your drawing after it's quote printed and see, eh, does it look right? Or am I making mistakes or is something missing that should be there? So your goal today is to be able to get an actual layout. Now the layout, if you noticed, is a PDF file. We still need to post the JPEG to the course website. So instead of printing to JPEG like you've been doing, today we're going to open that PDF file. So we have it. We're going to go ahead and take that PDF file. Don't open it in Acrobat, which is the default. We're going to open it with Adobe Illustrator. And the nice thing, if it loads, uh, about writing to PDF from AutoCAD is that all the lines stay live. They don't get flattened out into JPEGs. They're still live. So when we open them in Illustrator, we have access to all the lines. We'll spend next class talking about how to do post-processing on your AutoCAD drawing in Illustrator to make it look a little bit better. And of course, Illustrator's not responding. Why would it? I'm going to try to open Illustrator first and then open it from within Illustrator. We'll see if that'll work. All right, let me try to go to File and then Open, and let's see if I can open it. Uh, it was on my desktop. There it is. Let's see if we can open it this time. This should not be that hard. I've not had issues with this before. Um, my guess is that you guys will be able to do it without a problem. Um, while that's trying to open in the background, I'm going to go ahead and jump back over into AutoCAD. Uh, and let me open up my file from last class. And I'll show you how to deal with the topography.
OK, so this was the file that I was working on from last class. Um, I have two of the elevations done, but I didn't finish the rest of them just yet. But we're going to start working through the topography and getting the slope as opposed to uh, just the flat ground line. This part is not required. So you can just draw the flat line, and that's fine. It won't affect your grade on the final assignment. But I do want to point out how you would go about determining what this slope should be um, and kind of walk you through that exercise. So I'm going to go into my layers, and I'm going to turn off or freeze the no print layer. Oh, it's the current layer. Never mind. Let me switch over into the elevation layer first, and then I will turn off the no print layer so that's clear. I also need to turn back on the topography layer. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Layer Properties and create another, like uh, we'll call it Topo, Topo Guides, for lack of a better term. I'm going to make that current. Let's change that into, I'm going to do Cyan because you ought to be able to see it on the projector there. And I'm going to make that a non-printing layer. And so now I'm concerned with the Topo lines. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll find the outermost face of my building. So in this case, it's right here. And I'm going to create a construction line. Uh, I can type X line, or I can choose the construction line tool right there. I'll specify that outermost point and draw an infinite line going in both directions right along that plane. If I was doing it along this side, it would be just right along that line. If I was doing it for this elevation, it would be right along those points right there. And here, it would be right along that wall there. So it's just the outermost wall on your given side. Now I'm going to look for where this line crosses my topography and create a ray at each of those points. So we'll go to ray, and I'll create one there. I'll repeat and create one here. I'll repeat, oops, and create one there. I'll repeat and create one there. So I'm looking to get from topo, 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 and topo. The reason I want at least four is because it'll kind of smooth out the curve, as opposed to just doing from here to there. That would be just a straight line. So it'll help it look a little bit better. OK, next thing, I'll go back and create a construction line. So I'll go back to x line. I'll create my first X line at some arbitrary point down here. Then I will go ahead and take this line. And remember, these contour intervals were at one foot. So every contour is one foot. So I'm going to do an offset of one foot. And I'll do, I think it's four or five of those. I think it was only four that I needed. Yeah, it was only four. And so then I will start at where my lowest contour was. There it is. It would start right at that point where this and that intersect. And I'm going to draw a special type of line called a spline. It's this first one here. And what that means is it goes through a set of points. So I'll click on spline. Actually, let me switch to the um, south elevation layer. I'm going to go ahead and go to that spline tool right here. I'll start at my first point there. I'll move up, I'll move over to my next contour and go up by a foot. I'll move over to my next contour and go up by two feet. There it is. And I'll move to my last contour and go up by three feet. When I'm done, I'll press Enter. And this line here, I'll make it thicker so you guys can see it, is now the slope of the terrain along the back side of my building. So I just need to bring it up. I'll use a ray. Again, we'll do a ray from right there, that corner. And I will move this line from right there. Up to right there. And so that slope while gentle, is actually the slope at the back side of my building. And I started from this corner because this was the, the narrowest or the, the, the shortest corner. Um, I had this at 18 inches down from my floor. That's where I set my grade. Uh, and now it's going to get bigger going downhill. So I need to do some extensions. So I'll go ahead and type extend. 
I could also choose underneath the trim tool is the extend tool. It's going to ask me to select objects. I'll select these objects. I'll press enter and I'll extend down all of these so that they meet the ground. These ex go past. If I have extend active and I hold down shift, I can actually switch over into trim and get rid of those two there as well. So now I have that nice piece of sloping terrain along the back side of the building. I would repeat the same process going around this corner of the building. So same general idea. Let me go ahead and rotate the view so you guys can see, whoops, wrong direction. So you can see me do it again. I go ahead and start with the construction line, type X line, and that's going to go right along this wall. Oops. There it is. Oh, that should be on the um, topo guides layer. There it is. Actually, I should make all of my lines on the topo guides layer. Perfect. I'm going to look for points where it crosses the topo. So it crosses right here. So I'll do a ray from there, from right here, from right there. And we'll go ahead and do one more from right here. So there's my four lines. It is not this line anymore. So we'll go ahead and delete that to keep the confusion down. And I'll go ahead and do my series of X lines. There it is. And we'll go ahead and offset that again by one foot. One, two, three, four. And then we'll create the spline. Oh, switch layers. And then spline. Move up by one foot each time. Press enter when you're done. Now that's the slope there. So we'll take that. I'll make it thick so you guys can see it a little bit better. There it is. And now I just need to move that up to my building here. Now this one's a little bit trickier because I need to know on this corner, how far down is this? So I could pass lines across a 45 degree and figure out where it was, or I could just come up here and measure it. So I could say from right here to right there, it is, uh, let's see where it is, two foot one and seven eighths. Okay. So I'll take this one here. Let me do one more ray for reference. So now right where that corner of the building is, I'll take this line. I'm going to go ahead and move it. I'll start there. And it was two foot one and seven eighths. Was that what it was? So I'll go ahead and type two foot one and seven eighths. And then I will snap to my building like that. And now I have the slope along this edge of the building. So I can get rid of my uh, original line there, my flat line. I need to extend all of my lines down. This can go away too. I'll extend. And we'll have that one come down. That one come down. And that one come down like that. Okay, so you guys see how I kind of did that? It's a complicated thing, but I at least wanted to show you for those of you that are advanced uh, or feel really comfortable in AutoCAD and you want to try to sort that out, I thought it was worth explaining. That's how you would go about calculating where the, the grade would be on the outside edge of your building. It's not particularly steep, so it's not too hard to, to kind of calculate it out. Okay, um, let's see. The one other thing that sometimes people ask for or that can be beneficial is sometimes people ask for shadows. Uh, and they want to do shadows. If you want to do shadows, that's fine. Uh, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of shadows and shadow casting. That's more for 130 uh, or for 3D. We'll obviously do shadows when we do SketchUp. Uh, but if you wanted to interpret shadows in AutoCAD, you could do that. 
by thinking about them as a 45 degree line uh, with an offset. So if I was going to calculate a shadow on this particular building, let me go ahead and do a, uh, a new layer for shadows. So I'll call it shadows. I should probably call it A shadows, A dash shadows, but we'll make that active. Uh, I'm going to make it thin here like that. And so the first thing I need to do is, is figure out where my shadows go. So if this overhang sticks out by a foot, I can work on a 45 degree angle um, and just assume that the, the sun is at a 45, in which case I would offset this one down by a foot. So I'm just think about how far it sticks out and then go down by a foot. So I'd say offset, this would be one foot, and that would be the start of the shadow here. Now at a 45 degree line, I need to find out where this one meets up because this is still casting a shadow, but I don't know where it is. So I'll do a line starting right there at that ridge. And this is where I press tab to switch over. I'm going to specify 45 degrees and then I will click. That gives me a 45 degree line. Let me make sure that was actually at 45 degrees. I'm going to do a ray just to confirm. It didn't look like 45 degrees, that's all. No, that was right. Sometimes these play, play tricks with you. So we're going to say tab negative 45. Sorry, tab 45. There it is. And I'll do a single click. That gives me this edge. I'll go ahead and do a fillet. My radius of my fillet should be zero, which it is, so that I can connect this to that. This gives me the edge of the shadow here. Now I just have to do an offset of this line or a copy of this line. Might be easier to write there. I can get rid of that little piece. And if I were to fill this in, that would then represent the shadow on this part of the building. So I need to trim it out a little bit. So let me type trim. And I need to get rid of that there, that, and that. OK, so in this scenario, I want to fill this particular piece in. I can do a hatch fill with this. Uh, so I can go up and choose hatch. There it is. This time, though, my fill would be solid, and I would want to fill in this section. Now, sometimes, because I already have the siding here, it doesn't like this as a fill. So in that case, it may be beneficial to take these two lines that I already have, join them, and then continue with a polyline around the rest of where you want your shadow to be. So we'll go to there, to there, and to there. This line here and this line here, if I join together, oops, are now one continuous polyline. You see that? When I hatch, one of my options is to select objects rather than to just pick inside. I can click select objects. I can pick that, and it will fill that just that piece in. And I'll go ahead and press Enter. Now, I typically take the lines itself, and this is a personal preference, and I move those onto a no print layer so that the only thing, oops, the only thing that's showing is just the shadow itself. The shadow itself, this piece, probably needs to be a particular color. So if I look at my layers, I go back to home, let me look at my layer properties. Um, there's my shadows. I'm going to change my color of my layer to be maybe 253. And I will take my hatch there and choose. Oh, looks like I was choosing back by layer like that. Now, the one other piece of this is that this shadow is on top of everything else. So it's going to appear black. I can change the draw order and send it behind everything else by typing draw order. And here, enter object ordering option. Do I want it above objects, under objects, front, or back? I'm going to choose back, and it's now going to be behind all the rest of my objects.
so it won't be quite as, quite as obvious. And so there's that little piece of shadow. This shadow here would be pretty easy. It's the same because it's just an offset. If this overhang was a foot, I'd go down a foot and I'd fill that one in. This one's a little bit more complicated. I need to know how far this distance is. It looks like it's a foot too. Yep, that one's a foot too. So that makes life easy because I can essentially copy this shadow here onto this. The only difference is there's a shadow running down this side because of that little wing wall. So that's how you would go about calculating shadows. Again, it's an approximation. It's not an exact science. I'm just showing it to you because it's optional. It's something that you could do. So the elevation line and the shadows are both optional. They don't need to be in your final uh, for assignment 105. But since we're here and we're talking, I wanted to at least show you that as well. So let's see if Illustrator decided to, to load. Yes, it did finally. So once I've loaded it up in Illustrator, uh, like I said, the nice thing here is that all of these lines are actually live lines. So I can go through and I can make edits. We'll do that next class. Uh, but while I'm here and I've opened it in Illustrator, I'm going to go to File and then Export. And I'll export as. And this is where I can change to a JPEG. So you make the PDF out of AutoCAD, you bring it into Illustrator. Normally you would do some post-processing on it there, add text, add the things that you need. Then you'd take that PDF file and you'd go um, and make a JPEG out of it to post. So our process today, we're not doing any of the actual post-processing in Illustrator. We're just going to open up our drawing in Illustrator and just go to File, Export, JPEG. And then this will allow you to post the JPEG of what you've done today. Okay. All right, so you guys have about two more hours to work. So if you haven't finished your elevations, work on your elevations. Um, remember, because we're dealing with viewports, once you have your layout set up in AutoCAD, you can go back in model space and keep making changes. And it's always going to be reflected in your viewport when you go to print at the end. All right, you kind of need the elevation set up to do the viewport, though. So work on your elevations first.